this is actually kind of awkward because Anchorman 1 and 2 were pretty much one of the first films that I started watching like as far as like this year trying to get back into watching films I haven't seen for the first time. And so this the first time I saw this was about a few months ago. And I've posted a lot of other videos since then for my first time watches. But uh, this one I'm posting quite late because I recorded a couple of videos for it, but I never really felt satisfied with those videos. So I kind of just yeeted them away and uh, never recorded an actual good reaction for it for the first time watching. So even though it's been months, uh, I'm recording that video now. So yeah, Anchorman 1 and 2. First of all, I am normally not much of a comedy lover. As far as comedy films these days, I don't really give that much of a shit because most of them I don't think are all that funny in general. When I was in high school, I found comedies to be fucking fantastic. Nowadays, it's very, very much a miss. Only on occasion do you maybe get a hit on me. So Anchorman 1 and 2, surprisingly, did give me a hit. And I actually like Anchorman 2 more than Anchorman 1. And Will Ferrell also is kind of a mixed bag for me. I like like maybe half his stuff, and then I hate the other half of his stuff. He's just very annoying sometimes. Sometimes his annoyance is entertaining. Other times it's cringe to me. So it, even in some of the stuff that I like, I oh, fuck, God, a Will Ferrell thing, ugh, you know. But in this, I, I enjoyed it pretty well for the most part. It was pretty good. And a good little cast there, of course. You got Paul Rudd and the others. This was all right. I liked it. Uh, some of the comedy with it, you know, he's, you know, the anchor man is like held as some type of high regard in their in their world for some reason. And you get Christina Applegate coming in. I mostly knew her from the show Married with Children. I don't know much else that she's been in. So it's nice seeing her in a different role right here as all grown up, all grown up. And she's the new anchor woman on the block trying to make her way and whatnot. And she gets the opportunity to take his place essentially and he goes nuts and there's just there's a lot of stuff in the first one that was pretty funny but i think there's a lot more funny stuff in the second one you know she obviously does not like him she's uh, seems to be one that does is not falling for him and his stuff but then ultimately falls in love with him and of course you know like of course she would what who wouldn't fall in love with ron burgundy right but you're about to see one of the problems of not watching the film in a while and have only seen it once for the first time i don't remember that much that happens in anchorman one i remember a lot more with what happens in anchorman two but i'm trying to remember real quick before we move on to that one i think he gets his poor dog kicked okay yes 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 <laughs> he gets he has a little puppy with him and uh then some he this one guy just i think he runs over I think Ron runs over his motorcycle or something, or he, he does something that messes with this guy. And so he takes his dog and beats the crap out of him and or just drop kicks him. He just drop kicks him off a bridge. And you think, no, that's the end of the puppy. You cannot do that to a dog. No, but it's okay. The dog lives. The dog comes is actually an important piece to the final bit in the finale there. <clears throat> He's trying to get everything all back together. Uh, and, you know, trying to get back into the game and they're at this, uh, there's like bears and uh, like this bear, they're at a zoo, I think. I forget why they're at a zoo, but they're there and they get into the, into the actual cage, or the, not in the cage, they get into the little area or whatever where the bears are. And the dog just jumps in and, uh, you know, speaks bear or speaks animal or whatever and then gets them to go away. It's so stupid. It's so stupid, but... But I guess it is kind of funny. So I, I enjoyed it for that. And of course, there's the, you know, battle of the different news networks and everything or the different time slots. They're, they're battling each other. Vince Vaughn, you know, the, the other gang, the rival posse. And then you get this like epic battle showdown with everybody. Very ridiculous. Very Monty Python-esque, I would say in a way, and uh, it, it, was, it was a little funny, kind of entertaining, but yeah, the second film does a little, it somehow raises that up even more in the second film, and let's just get into that one right here, so that one, I like more things in that film, I think it's a better one than Anchorman 1, but I think there's more things in it that I also don't like, like in when they're in the beginning and they're in their RV, he's finally get, he's getting the crew back together, he's getting the whole crew back into it, they're gonna, they're gonna be a news team again, 
and they're in the RV. It's on cruise control or whatever. So he thinks that it's driving straight, and but it's not. It's just yeah, you know, it's going forward, but it's not you know steering the wheel or anything. So then that crashes and tips over, and all these things that they were setting up starts hitting them, like the bowling balls, the scorpions, coffee, whatever. It, it's like the slow motion upside down. Oh, weird. Oh, oh, so it, that stuff's cringe to me, man. It, no, it's not funny. So it's like, oh, this part's kind of lame. We're here for a little while. Okay, whatever. So then that's over with, and then we get going with the rest of the film here. So Christina Applegate, his, his uh, ex-lover right there, you know, had a kid with him and all, but they got divorced at some point, and she found somebody else, and uh, apparently thinks uh, Will Ferrell is convinced that he's got superpowers, uh, for some reason, I forget why, but he thinks he has superpowers. Uh, like her, her new boyfriend or whatever, he thinks he has superpowers, which is funny. I, I forget why exactly, but they set up something, some type of weird joke with that. And then he ends up actually having superpowers later. He's got like mind reading powers. He's able to, he's like guessing what Ron's going to say, I guess. And I don't know, or something, something weird. I, I'm honestly blanking a little bit on the specifics. I'll have to rewatch it again to remember that specific stuff <laughs> um this story you know it kind of has some more realism to it not not realism but i mean it's got a good commentary i guess good commentary what they're trying to do news 24 hours and you know it's kind of an obscene idea a bizarre idea it's like you know so that means that there's going to be a 11 p.m to like you know four or five a.m slot where people are not likely going to be watching the television not, not that many people some sure but not many and it's like, well, what's this supposed to be? Okay. And they're trying to come up with ideas to, you know, have something interesting. What, what would be engaging at this time at night or something? And he's like, yeah, let's just make it up. Fuck it. Just say whatever things we want to. And they are enjoying that. And then at some point it gets to where he's on, he's on and there's a white Bronco or there's a white car or whatever. And they're, they have, he's just giving his own commentary of what he thinks is happening. He's just like, oh, there might be some drug lord and, and whatever happening there. And who knows how many bodies and all that. And it was just an old man that was confused. Uh, and everybody was, but everybody was fully engaged with it. The audience, the ratings, everything's through the roof. Everybody was fully in it. And it turns out it's like, oof, you're kind of damaging the, the integrity of news because now it's just about how many views can you get on there. It's kind of a nice commentary on how a lot of things are today uh, as to why we can't, we, we can't necessarily believe everything that we're told when it comes to a lot of stuff, because you know, you're, you're more concerned about the views and the ratings than the truth, than like doing the reporting, than getting the facts correct. You're trying to push something or you're trying to achieve a goal of some kind over telling the truth. So that's touched on in this film. And then at some point he gets, he gets blind and he, he can't do So he can't do the news anymore. He just did this and opened up the gateway and then he's blinded. And so he just lives on his own and he's, you know, just very ridiculous with it. Uh, drinking ketchup and whatever, just a lot of ridiculous stuff there. But then, you know, he goes on this uh, journey of learning how to live with it and whatnot. And he even befriends a baby shark and raises it. And whatever. It's just like, Oh, I, I love this. It's it's so stupid, but I I love it. Uh, this was this was pretty hilarious. And then he gets his eyesight back anyway, and uh, just some funny comedy just ensues with that in general. And he, when he had the when he had the uh, the black boss, I could, I'm just saying that because I don't remember her name. He gets the female lady black boss, whom is like you know very strict against them, was against a lot of the stuff that they were doing, but then of course wants to bang him and is like putting the moves on him in his office and he's like extremely nervous oh what, 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 what actually it's just like uh not like a normal one who would just be nervous but like her aggressiveness was surprising to him so it's just like oh shit what you know that was different impressions so uh, that was pretty funny and then yeah they have another huge epic mega duper super duper showdown with all these other news stations again just like even more so and and yeah just bizarre stuff and uh, like technology involved <laughs> just, like, this is a weird little battle of these news anchors and he's got a goal he's trying to get to it with all this and it's just like okay this is uh this is worth it i i love this one this one's a good one I, i'm gonna rewatch watch anchorman 2 I'm probably not gonna watch anchorman 1 but i'm definitely gonna rewatch anchorman 2 i freaking loved it uh, yeah, and hopefully, uh, you know, in the future, you know, I don't know. On the live stream, I might talk about this with some people because it's like, dude, there should be an Anchorman 3. I've heard this one recommended for a long time now, 
And I could see freaking why. It was pretty funny. But honestly, I don't think they'll be able to necessarily recapture that type of uh, the type of love. Even if they have, you know, the modern day, there's probably a lot you could say these days, you know, especially with, you know, pronouns and activism and all that stuff. And, you know, uh, rush job. A lot, a lot of things you could you could make some commentary with, but I don't think that most studios will have the balls to do that. So, uh, yeah, that's all I got to say on this one. Have a good one.